Okay, here is a cal an AP Calc AB um, free response question that I wanted to respond to a little bit. The question is, 20 feet of wire is to be used to create a wire sculpture that consists of a square and a circle. Find the largest number of square feet of area that can be enclosed by the square and the circle. Um, so this is a kind of cool question. So we have this little circle over here and we have a square over here and we have some stuff going on here. Uh, the first thing I'm thinking about is the fact that we only have 20 feet of wire. From there go to the total area. So when you think about the total area here, this is the total area of a square obviously and here's the total area of a circle so the total area of the two would be well those two things added together. The area of a square right is x times x therefore x squared and you have to have memorized that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Um, so that gives me a little bit of problem there also because here we are in single variable calculus and yet we have the variable r here and the variable x here so it gives up a problem. However if we go to the perimeter right because we're going to have to put wire all the way around these these things so we have to figure out what the perimeter is. Well the perimeter is 20 and 20 equals 4x right x plus x plus x plus x is 4x and the perimeter of a circle happens to be 2 pi r. So given that, you can see here, we're going to find r in terms of x. And therefore, the, with the idea being that we're going to find this r right here, and we're going to put it in here, and hopefully get this whole thing in terms of x. So just a little bit of algebra here, just moving stuff around. Yeah? Here. Okay. Radius here. Um, we had, when I backed this thing out, I backed out 4 here, but it ended up with 2 over 2, so the pi's disappeared. This was a 4, so this was a 2 down here. So that's where all that stuff is. So here's our radius right here, isn't it? Here's our radius. So what we want to do is go back, is go back to the area function. That's not very good writing. Back to the Go back to the area function, and when we get back to this area function, what we're going to do is here. Remember, we had the area is x squared plus pi r squared. Well, the r thing kind of freaked us out, so here's r right here. We saw up and now we have r in terms of x. We plug it in here. Then some weird stuff happened. I tried to really diagram this a lot for you. Uh, one, uh, please use caution here because there are, I said in class today that a lot of really good calculus is messed up by a little bit of bad algebra. So remember here that this thing was squared and that exponents are distributable over multiplication. So this 2 goes to here. That gives us this 2 squared here. And it's this times this. So this is a quantity here. So the 2 goes here. There's this, right? And I'm also going to distribute the exponent of 2 to this down here. The other thing that I worried about, just leaving this aside for a second, just looking here and here, I can see how a person might be tempted to cross cancel here. But remember, PEMDAS says that we have to do exponents before multiplication or division. So something to think about. Try to avoid those small mistakes there. Um, <clears throat> after we distributed the exponent, what I did do here was this, if you remember, this was was pi squared. Here's a pi to the first. They cancel out a little bit, right? Pi goes into itself once pi goes into pi squared here. So that's where this came from. All right? So uh, again, 2 squared is 4, and 5 minus x quantity squared is, well, 5 minus x quantity squared. And remember that these values, one of these values of pi canceled out from out here. So here we are with this mess. So we have area now. And then this is the part that kind of freaked people out. And they were kind of wondering, why did I, why did I do what I did? I'm saying I'm going to take this and I'm going to convert this to this. And all I did here was this. I took pi over pi. And of course, pi over pi is 1. And 1 times any number is just that number. So this is just 1 I'm using here. But, but the reason I'm doing that is if I do that, I'll have a denominator of pi here and a denominator of pi here. I'll have common denominators and we can gather these things under one term. So that's how we got here. And I guess you might wonder, well, why would I bother to do that? Well, I'm, I want to rewrite this a little bit. So I'm just starting in my mind to rewrite this 
for purposes of differentiation. And I'm going to write again. So look what I did here. If you think about it this way, let's see here, that's what I think. Think about it this way. Right? It's like there's a 1 out here, isn't there? And then here's this pi down here. And I just factored that out. This 1 over pi is this 1 over pi. Um, because this is in the denominator, there's no way, pi is, well, pi is a number, so there's no way that number is going to zero. It, it has a numeric value here, so I just pull that out, and now it becomes my constant multiplier. Don't have to worry about that too much. And now I'm going to go ahead and start taking the derivative of the area with regard to x. So as I do that, right, we have pi x squared. Remember, pi is not a variable, it's a number, so this 2 comes down. This 2 is this 2. This is to the first power because 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's this differentiated. And then this piece right here is just a little bit, isn't it? It's just a little bit of chain rule. So I'm going to do the outside. I'm going to do f prime at g of x first. So 2 times 4 is 8 times, right? I'm going to leave the inside the way it was. And then I'm going to multiply, right? This is f prime, sorry, f prime at, wow, 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 wow. This is f prime at g of x right here, isn't it? No, it's not right here, isn't it? And then this is g prime at x right here, right? So this is that g prime, the derivative of the inside. And then I started to really um, mess this up. So I started to do some multiplication here because, right, we have a, an exponent of just 1. So negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, right? And negative 8, right? negative 8, so negative 8 times 40 is negative 40, a negative times a positive is a positive here. So far so good. If you need to take a second, stop so you can catch up on the notes. I know I'm a little bit fast, I apologize. And then remember that we were trying to trying to max this, and we know that on an interval our max is going to happen um, somewhere there. We're going to look for critical values, and then we're going to take a look at the left and right boundaries and see what happens from there. So as I let this go to zero, right, I move this pot positive 40, this negative 40 over is a positive 40, and then kind of freaked everybody out because I divided by 2, 2 pi plus 8. Well, I don't know what 2 pi plus 8 is, but it's certainly 2 pi plus 8. So what I did was, right, I factored out, instead of factoring out the number, I factored out x. So they both have a common factor of x, so here's x. And now I have this as my coefficient, and I divided both sides by that. Did a little bit of simplification here. I was really excited because I thought I was done. I really did. I thought I was done. And then it started to occur to me that there could be another issue here. And there actually is. We have a domain here that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That is to say we're measuring distances, and distances can't be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to 0. And also, if you think about it, x has to be less than or equal to 5 because we have this square, right? We have this square over here, and it's x. Its perimeter is x plus x plus x. If x was 5, I'd have 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. Anything greater than 5, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a wire length greater than the available wire. So have to stay inside these parameters. So after I realized that, I started to think about the fact that we, right, we have this, don't we? So given that, I decided better check some things out. So I checked f of the left bound, which f was f of 0, and it was 31.831. And if you think about this, what this gives us here is it gives us no circle. It makes the circle go away, doesn't it? It makes the circle... Whoa, whoa, is that right? Am I right? Oh, it doesn't. It makes the square go away, doesn't it? If we have x is 0, x is... Right? Where are we here? Right here it is. Sorry, you guys. X is here. Here's the area right here, and here x is zero, zero squared, right? Here we get five minus zero. That makes perfect sense, and we're going to do all this math with that. And that gives us when we I just dropped this in my calculator because this is a free response, so you'll probably have your calculator with you. I dropped this in my calculator, and I got that 31.318. Remember, if that happens, the you end up with a circle with a radius of zero. But nonetheless, you get a point there. Stay with me. 
do the same thing here. We found this critical value, and that's what kind of set me up, is that I took the critical value, and I thought, oh, this is going to be my max area. Well, when I compared it to these other, these other numbers, I'm like, this 31 is greater than that. I, I didn't really think about that. And I thought, well, what if we have, we take f of 5. f of 5 maxes out the square, doesn't it? And it turns the circle to 0. So here's what we have at this larger square. But right, if we go back here, we can show that. That here, we'd have this. We'd have 5 squared is 25. But look, we'd have here, we'd have 5 minus 5 is 0. 2 times 0, doesn't matter what you do to it. We're going to have 0 up here, aren't we? So we have a circle that's actually a dot in a, in a larger square. So those are the possibilities. So I guess my point to you is, and I think it's really, really relative to this, is that think about these free response problems a little bit. And if you realize, oh my gosh, that there, are, there is a domain here, that we have domain issues, please be careful to check the left and right bounds and any and all critical values and compare them. Because as I did, I realized, well, 25 is not greater than that, so I apologize. Here is the max right here, isn't it? Wow. So the max is here this is the this is the minimum so when we're looking to max the area so it turns out the area is maximized when the when the square goes to zero and we just take that area of the circle so there's the problem i hope it was uh, this was helpful i know you guys are working hard at this it's going to pay off when you take the exam so hang in there